Check it out now, y'all. Nano Hub U online instruction. Hello, welcome to lecture two on uh, week four thermoelectric systems. Uh, today we are going to talk about a thermoelectric cost efficiency trade off. Uh, what we described last time is that whenever you want to convert uh, an efficiency to a dollar per watt, we need to associate a cost, for example, per unit area. And this is the type of uh, balances that one considers um, how to reach low dollars per watt uh, for an energy conversion efficiency. Uh, and um, today we want to see how we can achieve that using the thermoelectrics with most generic cases. Of course, one could take a specific application, um, uh, but uh, we want to get a, a set of uh, parameters that tells us how this cost efficiency trade-off will play out. Um, so uh, let's start by considering a waste heat recovery application. So we have some sort of a heat source that is available and for the moment we can uh, assume this is uh, waste heat so it's free energy. The question is how we can take care, uh, we can use that by putting a thermoelectric uh, uh, next to it. The first lesson is that the thermoelectric um, generates power from a temperature difference um, and if we just stick it to a hot side without doing anything special all of the model will take will be hot, so no power comes out. We need a temperature gradient. So we need to put a heat exchanger on the other side, and typically we need to do some work forcing air or water through the heat exchanger to ensure a good temperature difference. So that optimization of thermoelectric with heat exchanger need to be done together. The second uh, aspect of it is that this thermoelectric model, we generate power, we connect it to a load resistance, and the delivered power is what needs to be optimized. So there are two parameters that need to be co-optimized. How do we choose the value of the load resistance and how we optimize uh, the heat exchanger? For the load resistance, uh, the simplest uh, uh, analysis, if I have a battery that I connect to a resistance, so we know that the maximum power happens when the value of the resistance is equal to the internal resistance of my battery. In the case of thermoelectrics, because of um, current flow um, produces temperature variations, in addition to the ohmic resistance that is a, a internal resistance, we also need to consider some thermoelectric effects. So the ratio between these load resistance and this resistance is actually also given by some sort of ZT. How about the heat uh, part of it? I have here kind of schematic diagram of the picture in the previous page. We have a heat source, a thermoelectric model, and a heat sink like a microchannel, a heat exchanger. If the thermoelectric model is very thick, then the temperature difference across the thermoelectric element is large, is good, large temperature difference to uh, give us large Seebeck induced voltage. But because this is thick, the heat flux through the thermoelectric leg is small, so I can get small current. If I have very small current, power is voltage times current, I cannot get much voltage, uh, much power out of it. On the other hand, if the thermoelectric element is very thin, uh, I have a huge amount of heat flux going from uh, the input to the heat exchanger, but there is not a, enough temperature difference, so the voltage generated is small. Um, and voltage time current again is power, we get small output power. Just by this heuristic argument, um, it can be um, seen that there should be an optimum thickness for this thermoelectric element. So this thickness, these need to be optimized carefully, and that again has to do with the thermal resistances with the outside world. That's the first aspect of a system optimization. Here are the calculations of normalize output power from a thermoelectric device as a function of load resistance ratio and um, thermal resistance ratio. This is the ratio of a load resistance divided by internal resistance of thermoelectric, and this is the ratio of the thermal resistance of thermoelectric divided by external thermal resistance. Um, and as you can see, um, there is a maximum when um, the ratios of the thermal and electrical resistances are given by m factor 1 plus the square root of z times t. t is the average temperature between the hot and the cold side of the thermoelectrics. Um, 
And uh, for example, a ZT of one give you M equal to 1.4. Um, um, and uh, this can be verified by this graph that gives you the maximum power. Again, why um, the maximum power is not happening when the internal resistance is exactly equal to the external load resistance is because of the thermo, uh, thermoelectric energy exchange and the ZT comes in. If the material have a low ZT, this number is one, we don't have to worry about it. Now that we know this, let's calculate uh, we know what should be the thermal resistance that we should apply on the cold side. Um, let's see what are uh, the trade-offs. A microchannel can be opti uh, optimized. Uh, there are equations um, of a given, uh, for example, a copper microchannel with a given uh, microchannel width. There is an optimum design uh, based on the convection from the fin surface and sensitive heat of the fluid. Uh, there is a power uh, required to pump fluid through it. And um, we will discuss later on how this power changes with uh, heat fluxes and so on. But this can be put in an optimization. And at the end, once the heat sink is optimized, uh, thermoelectric is optimized with the heat sink, we can calculate the cost per unit area as a function of heat flux and the heat source. In this case, we assume a material with Z times T of 1, thermal conductivity 1.5 watt per meter Kelvin, um, a substrate thermal conductivity of 100 watt per meter Kelvin, and a thickness of 0.2 millimeter. This is aluminum nitride. This is used a plate where the thermoelectric legs are uh, placed. Here we assume a heat source at 600 Kelvin, 300 degrees Celsius, and ambient of room temperature. Fan efficiency, the efficiency of air going through uh, uh, <coughs> the pumping for uh, sending the air through the microchannel or uh, sending uh, liquid through copper microchannel uh, is assumed to be 30%. The cost of bismuth telluride or lead telluride thermoelectric material on the order of $500 per kilogram. Uh, the cost of aluminum nitride is about $100 per kilogram. Either aluminum as an air heat sink is used or um, copper as um, a microchannel heat sink is used. Um, and and uh, so at the low um, heat fluxes, we use air heat sink. At high heat fluxes, we use uh, water heat sinks. Uh, just to uh, uh, situate the 1000 watt per meter square, this is typically one sun um, and um, uh, 1 million watt per meter square is 1000 sun. It gives you uh, an idea of order of magnitude. Most internal combustion engines and combustion processes produce numbers on the order of 10 to the 5, 10 to the 6 in this range, high heat fluxes, and um, uh, just the ambient temperature are low um, heat fluxes. Uh, the substrate is assumed to have this uh, un uh, thickness of 0.2 millimeter everywhere, so it's a constant cost on the order of $100 per meter square. Um, the cost of the air heat sink changes because at each of these heat fluxes, we need to optimize the microchannels and that changes the amount of material used, uh, similarly for uh, copper. But you can see here, the cost of the TE material is the largest part. Um, and for example, if we are at 110 to the 5, which is on the order of 10 watt per centimeter square, the cost of the thermoelectric material could be approaching 10,000 dollar per meter square. This is because the thickness of the material needed to match to this heat flux, the thermal impedance, um, is, is thick enough that with this price, we can uh, it become quite significant. You see with ZT of 1 and ZT of 4 slight differences. This is because the thermal conductivity of the material is assumed to change, and that changes a little the optimum thickness. Um, well, first, you see from this graph, we have an advantage to use higher and higher heat fluxes because the higher and higher heat fluxes, this is more concentrated source of heat. The optimum thickness of a thermoelectric is thinner, so the cost goes down. But of course, there are practical limits. It's very hard to go above uh, 1000 sun or so and kind of manage the stress in the system. Uh, but that's uh, 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 one of the major uh, components uh, to the cost. Um, how can we reduce the amount of material cost? Uh, is, there is a simple idea is when we have a input heat flux, 
we don't need to put thermoelectric material everywhere. We could use heat concentration inside a plate so that the heat is going, is spread out and is sent through the thermoelectric leg through some concentration. Um, if we do that, then the uh, amount of thermoelectric material used will be much less and still this thermal impedance could match what is the heat sink. F is the fractional area coverage, area of the TE legs divided by area of the heat source. In the previous example, we assume F equal one, we covered all of these by thermoelectric material. Here we use some heat concentration. What would be the impact in the cost? First, we need to look at what is the impact in the performance. What happened is that the performance um, has some penalty because as the heat spreads in the substrate, there is an additional thermal resistance. This is often called spreading thermal resistance. It can be uh, calculated, uh, simple uh, equations for heat transfer as a function of lambda, which is the ratio of the thickness between the plate and the size of the heat source. Um, as well as thermal conductivity of this heat spreader, the plate, um, A uh, is again the radius, and there is an angle here that tells you how far the heat spreads, and again is a function of um, uh, the, the ratio of the thicknesses and uh, the thermal conductivities. One puts this extra thermal resistance in the equations, and then we calculate what will be the cost per unit area with the same heat fluxes when we use instead of F equal one, which was our previous data, F equal 0.1, which is 10% fractional area coverage, or F equal um, 0.01, 1% fractional area coverage. Um, you can see that the cost of the thermoelectric leg comes down significantly. Why is that? Is that when you go from 100% coverage to 10% coverage, you have 10% less, uh, 10 times less thermoelectric material. But to get um, with the same thermoelectric, uh, the same thermal resistance, you, you need to make the thermoelectric legs actually thinner. So you have another factor of 10 in thickness you win. Overall, you win a factor of 100. That's how you go from $10,000 per meter square to $100 per meter square. So this use of heat concentration or fractional area coverage is a significant impact. Um, and that was pointed out in a paper in 2011. So the question is, um, then how, uh, if we increase now ZT of material instead of ZT of one or four, the, the dollar per watt, how it changes. Um, here, uh, the example is given with slightly different parameters. Um, this is parameters that um, apply to the car exhaust. Um, in that case, the source temperature is about 900 Kelvin, 600 degrees Celsius, ambient a little uh, more than uh, 300, 330 Kelvin. We assume the same source efficiency, uh, similar ZT of one. And uh, in this case, we use an alumina substrate, I don't know, aluminum nitride. The cost is significantly lower, $5 per kilogram is not as high thermally conductive, but the penalty of additional thermal resistance um, is not um, large enough, and the significant reduction in its cost is the reason we want to use it. We use the copper heat sinks. Uh, these are the heat transfer coefficients, again, things that match for exhaust. Uh, this graph tells you the dollar per watt of um, different geometries when you have F equal one, F equal 0.1, and F equal 0.2, 50% coverage, 20% coverage. If we use today's material with ZT of one, the cost is on the order of two, three dollars per watt. If we take today's geometry and we improve ZT from one to 10, the two curves where uh, the improvement in ZT comes from a reduction in thermal conductivity or an increase in power factor should give you different results. Why is it? Is because if I increase the thermal, decrease the thermal conductivity to, to increase ZT, uh, the thickness of the material I need to make thermal impedance matching also decreases. So the advantage uh, is more. So I can go from here to something on the order of 20, 30 cents per watt. Uh, while if I improve ZT by improving power factor with the same ZT number, the reduction in cost is significantly less. Why? Because 
in this case, um, I need the thicker materials. Um, but you can see that beyond ZT, going from a fractional area coverage of 1 to 20% can almost make the cost of a thermoelectric material in a model, even with a cost of $500 per kilogram, to be negligible. And that's a significant advantage. Um, uh, and so that's uh, a direction where we can use thermoelectrics with moderate ZTs for waste heat recovery applications. In the last couple of minutes, we want to uh, look at a topping cycle case. Here is a coal power plant that I showed before. You have burning uh, uh, flames and uh, fuel uh, coal in this case, generating temperatures up to 1900 Kelvin. And we want to see if we put some thermoelectrics in the wall, uh, what we can get. So we have between the flame uh, and combustion and the working fluid in the ranking cycle, a thermoelectric system. And between and outside, we keep the rest of the ranking cycle. The question is, what will be the efficiency of the overall system and what are the costs associated with it? Here is um, a paper that came out uh, in 2013. Um, Basically, the efficiency versus interface temperature. We have a two-stage energy conversion. So uh, if we make the interface temperature to be close to the uh, room temperature, uh, that means most of the work is done by thermoelectrics. And the thermoelectric with ZT of 1 have efficiency with these lights temperature gradients up to about 15%. If this uh, temperature gradient become, uh, this interface become closer and closer to the hot side, the efficiency of thermoelectric become lower and lower because there is less delta T available for thermoelectric to do it at work. Steam turbine alone follows this curve. Um, again, if the interface temperature here is um, uh, on, uh, on the very hot side, a steam turbine could do more work and um, uh, you can reach efficiencies of 40 some percent, 45 percent. And uh, by lowering the interface temperature, the efficiency goes down. Um, of course, if we can keep pushing this higher and higher, uh, the steam turbine have higher efficiency. Here is a really mechanical um, uh, impediment is that the working fluid in the turbine and the, uh, the mechanical fatigue uh, give uh, some limitation. What is the maximum temperature it could operate? And often that maximum temperature is on the order of 800 Kelvin. So we are about, let's say in this case, a simplified steam turbine uh, model of 30%. If now you add the thermoelectric with ZT of 1, you can go from 30% to 37, 8%. And Z2, 2 or 5, it's even improving more. So you can see that there is potential to increase the overall power plant efficiency from 3 to about 8% with a ZT of material uh, that is between 0.3 to 1. So this is a case because we use the thermoelectric at the play, at the temperatures in which we have the highest exergy loss, we can improve the efficiency quite a bit. Um, uh, how the cost can be calculated? Again, there's a simple model that is explained here. Um, this is uh, energy economy dollar per kilowatt hour versus operation hours. The longer we operate the same material, of course, uh, the cost goes down and it saturates at the cost of the burning the fuel. A steam turbine alone, uh, the cost is in this case with this low uh, kind of efficiency of about 30% is on the order of 30 cents per kilowatt hour. And you can see what is the impact of ZT of 1, 2, or 5. Of course, the higher ZT has a bigger impact, but uh, even with the ZT of 1, we can impact the cost. Um, uh, recently, we have pushed um, uh, the calculation and take into account a realistic detailed coal fire power plant. Uh, this is a paper that uh, will be published by December. Uh, is, in this case, is a supercritical turbine. In different locations of the turbine, what is the local heat flux and temperature is used as a boundaries uh, and then optimize the thermoelectric uh, model to put at these boundaries. Um, uh, with uh, these kind of um, calculations, then we can obtain the direct impact in efficiency. Here is a table that tell you at each of the locations in the boiler, depending on the temperature ranging from 1680 Kelvin down to 1150 Kelvin uh, downstream, 
There is an optimum thickness of the thermoelectric leg, the fins that need to enhance the heat transfer. This is the temperature on the hot and the cold side of the thermoelectrics. The ZT of the thermoelectric based on this temperature, uh, in this temperature difference range, which is again realistic numbers between 0.6 to 0.88. At the end, we see the overall efficiency of the power plant could increase by 7%. Let me summarize it. Uh, in this lecture number two, we uh, described the cost efficiency trade-off. Uh, we uh, showed that there is a, a significant uh, uh, potential when the heat sink and the thermoelectric model are co-optimized and the load resistance need to be also co-optimized. Uh, by new, using the new thermoelectric model uh, designs uh, with low fractional area coverage, we can reduce the cost. And finally, the high temperature topping cycle thermoelectrics, um, even with a moderate ZT uh, of 0.3 to 1, can improve power plant efficiency from 2 to 8 uh, percent. Um, so uh, you can see that thermoelectrics uh, uh, could play a role in an energy um, uh, landscape uh, if uh, they are used judiciously. Uh, of course, uh, when you put a thermoelectric in a very hot environment, there is a lot of thermal stress, uh, material stability issues that need to be optimized, so there are still uh, very good um, uh, potential for uh, optimization. Um, what we will do next time, now that we have seen a full system implementation of thermoelectrics and what is the cost and efficiency, is how we can uh, now go to the micro scale and look at micro refrigerators on a chip. Uh, look forward to seeing you in lecture three.